Morning, everyone, and thanks for coming. Um, we're just going to give it a few moments uh, just to let some people filter in, and then we'll then we'll get started. So bear with us just a second. Okay, see we've got a few people in the in the webinar now, so we'll um, we'll get started. Uh, so Taylor Swift has recently uh, come under scrutiny for her um, use of private jets as part of her era's tour, and the environmental impact that that has on the planet. Um, but what if I told you that everyone in this webinar is contributing to a much bigger uh, greenhouse gas emissions causer, uh, in fact twice as large as as aviation. So I'm James Carr, I'm the Senior SEO Specialist at Elixir Digital, and today I'm going to talk you through how to achieve dis uh, digital sustainability with SEO. So today we'll be going through a few topics. Uh, we'll be introducing the importance of digital sustainability, uh, going through an important announcement from Google to help contextualise it, uh, giving you an idea of how Core Web Vitals improve sustainability, covering why SEO is required for sustainability, uh, giving you an idea of why you should care, and then we'll introduce you to a, a better way to test your website, give you an example of the data we can gather uh, with a process we've developed, and then uh, we'll have summer at the end. But there will be a short Q&A at the end, so if you've got any questions, feel free to, um, to, to post them in the questions channel, and I'll do my best to answer them at the end. So in terms of introducing the importance of digital sustainability, so I mentioned uh, right at the beginning that we're all part of a kind of invisible issue uh, to do with greenhouse gas emissions uh, and that it's twice as large as aviation. So you can see there that uh, internet usage currently accounts for up to 3.9% of global greenhouse emissions each year, which is almost double that of aviation's 2%. So despite the fact that sustainability is an ever-growing topic across multiple industries, uh, with loads of kind of big brands trying to go net zero over, over a period of time, um, and sort of people being aware of changes needed in things like transport and use of plastics and, and other, other issues like that. Digital, uh, digital sustainability is uh, kind of a more invisible kind of issue, but one that is um, just, as, just as big, and I will uh, talk you through why that is. So to provide uh, an outstanding experience. Modern websites are absolutely full of data-rich content. So you've got high-resolution images, uh, you've got video, and it's all managed by complex code, and that it uses uh, a lot of energy to load every single page, uh, and that happens in three stages. So websites rely on the transfer of data between the front end, the web page, and the back end, which is the server. So there's a transfer of data between the browser and the server, and transferring that data requires energy, which creates emissions. Uh, the second stage is that the server compiles the necessary data, delivering it via switches, servers, routers, and caches. And each step of that process also requires energy, so it also has a, um, an attributed uh, emissions level as well. And then the more data that is transferred, it stands to reason, um, the more energy is required, and then that is even more so over a, a greater distance. Um, 
so you can very quickly see that there's there's lots of stages involved whereby uh, greenhouse gas emissions are very very um, possible in terms of loading up websites. So to give you some context around this, uh, we need to have a look at an, uh, uh, an announcement from Google uh, a couple of years ago, uh, which was around uh, Core Web Vitals. So Core Web Vitals was launched in 2020, and the whole goal of it was to uh, speed up the load time of sites. And a lot of that came from uh, kind of reducing the size of the pages. So it kind of directly links into everything we're talking about today. Um, and they recently announced that in 2023 alone, Core Web Vitals saved Chrome users more than 10,000 years of page load time, which is a huge number. Um, and that obviously has a huge impact on reducing the carbon footprint of the web. So for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with Core Web Vitals, it was made up of three core metrics. So there was largest contentful paint, uh, which measured the loading performance. And that was basically based on the largest item on the page and how long it took to load. So that was typically something rich, like um, an image or a video, something like that. Uh, first input delay, i.e. how long it takes for the page to be uh, interactive. So how long it takes a, a, a user to be able to click on anything. And then there was cumulative layout shift, which measured the visual stability. So when the page has, is loading, do elements move around because um, some other elements are loading in and causing things to move around? Um, so that's quick intro to uh, Core Web Vitals. So, so how does Core Web Vitals improve sustainability is, is, is the next question. So the main impact is from that largest content for paint. Um, I, I already said that the smaller you can make your page, the less data is transferred over the wire, less energy use, uh, the less emissions are created. So it's estimated that internet consumes as much electricity as the whole of the UK. Uh, and that's because server banks have to run 24 seven to allow you to serve up data any time of day to anywhere in the world. And it's estimated that the average CO2 produced by a single web page is 0.8 grams as part of that process which doesn't sound like a big number. In fact, it is a tiny number, but if your page gets a thousand views a day, that's 800 grams of CO2, which adds up to 292 kilograms a year. So it's just over a quarter of a ton in emissions um, from one page. Uh, so you can see how quickly those tiny numbers turn into much bigger numbers. And then what the impact of uh, core of vitals would be on those numbers if we can kind of improve the page. So that moves us on to the uh, question of why is SEO required for sustainability? Um, and how can, we, how can we help out? So even now, four years after Core Web Vitals was launched, uh, it's estimated that only 40% of websites actually meet the Core Web Vitals thresholds. So it stands to reason that there's 60% of sites out there that aren't um, kind of loading as efficiently as they possibly could, uh, which means they are more than likely using more um, load time more data transfer, and that means more emissions. And Core Web Vitals is something that SEO specialists have been working on for four years at this point. So we're very kind of on the front line of, of, of knowing how to diagnose problems and, and, and kind of sort these issues out. So the big question is, is why should you care? Um, you know, sustainability, not maybe necessarily not at the forefront of your mind in terms of uh, things you want to achieve with your business but i'll i'll, I'll talk you through why uh, it's really good for you so a study by uh, deloitte <clears throat> showed that on an e-commerce site uh, 0.1 second improvement in page load results in the following so it's a 9.2 percent increase in average order value an 8.4 percent increase in user transactions a 5.7 percent decrease in bounce rates 5.2% increase in page views per session. And for lead generation sites, so non-e-commerce, uh, then we also saw a 5.5% increase in lead generation. So you can see that it stands to reason, reducing, increasing the speed of your site, which will also uh, optimize your carbon footprint, helps to optimize, uh, sorry, improve the return on investment of your website. You will get better results from your website by um, taking digital sustainability seriously. The other half of the equation is that 52% um, of consumers want to buy from brands whose values they share. So sustainability is a huge um, topic. It's only growing. Um, we can, we can, you know, we can prove that from the fact that everyone was talking about Taylor Swift taking um, private flights. 
everywhere. Um, so people have got a, uh, more of an eye on it than ever before. I also mentioned that uh, massive brands are now sort of trying to become net zero by a certain time. Um, so it really is at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, so if you can align with what your customers uh, and your consumers want, they will be more likely to, to trade with you, to use your products and services, et cetera. So this brings us on to um, this, this process that we've developed, um, <clears throat> which we hope will kind of help people to highlight where they can make improvements on their site and where their sites can be better. So um, there are tools out there available where you can test single URLs and they will tell you um, the carbon emissions of that page. Uh, but if you wanted to test your entire website, it would be really, really time consuming uh, and you'd have to just manage it for a long time. Um, but we've developed a method to test URLs in bulk, which allows us to calculate the carbon footprint of an entire website in one go. Uh, so it's based on models created through a combination of scientific studies and estimates. So there's lots of formulas uh, that we've used to kind of calculate this information. And we can use real world data. So we can either use uh, Google Analytics data, so we can tell you exactly how your page performs or site performs, or we can use uh, kind of traffic estimate data to get a, an estimated idea of how your site performs. And um, it tells us three pieces of information. So we get a complete overview of how your entire website performs. Uh, we'll be able to see how each page performs on an individual basis and then where the opportunities for improvement are. And then we can give you an idea of the priority of these improvements and a projected figure for improvements in sustainability at the end of the process. So um, it's probably much more useful if I talk you through an example of the data we can gather from that process. Uh, so the data I'm going to take you through is from a real website. Um, it's, it, it exists, so all of this data is completely um, true. So one of the first things uh, we look at is whether or not the site is hosted using uh, green hosting um, or standard hosting. So green hosting would be that where uh, the energy generated for the servers is done through renewable sources, wind, solar, uh, sea, that kind of thing. Uh, because green hosting automatically has a has a nine percent uh, decrease in the amount of uh, CO two that's that's generated. So that can be an immediate win. Uh, we then calculate the emissions per page load. So we break that up into three areas. So we have the page with the lowest emissions. Uh, we use the page with the highest emissions. And then we take all of your pages and we work out an average value. And that average value allows us to assign a overall rating. So not unlike an EPC report that you might get for your home, um, we can give you a rating for your site uh, to give you an idea of kind of how it performs at the moment. Once we have all of these values together, we can either use Google Analytics data or um, traffic estimate data if we need to, and we can calculate the total annual emissions for your site. So this site in 2023 generated 63,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide, so that's just over 63 tonnes. Um, and then we've added in this emissions per mu metric because you know, you're all businesses, we get it, uh, you want to get more visitors to your site, so it's inevitable that the carbon footprint of your site is and should increase. Um, but what we can do is we can aim to limit uh, the impact uh, that you have on the environment by trying to kind of limit, limit the number of uh, emissions per view. So to try and give people a better idea of how that looks in the real world, we also use these um, these factors here. So we, we put them into real world data. So um, that site in the year that we tested, 2023, it would have taken 2,544 trees to absorb the amount of CO2 that the site created. So if you look into run kind of carbon offset um, programs, uh, we can tell you exactly the number of trees you need to plant to achieve that. Uh, we can also look at the number of uh, cups of tea that could have been made with the equivalent emissions. So in this case, just over three quarters of a million. And then in the background, we also know how much electricity would have been um, absorbed or, or needed to load your website over that time. And we can tell you how far you could have driven an electric vehicle uh, on that charge. So in this case, 805,000 kilometers, which is about eight times around the world, which is not insignificant. 
because we can run this process on pretty much any website, um, we can compare you to your competitors. So we can see what the average value for you is, and then we can see what the average value for your competitors is. So if you're in a in an industry where sustainability is a growing topic and you want to see where you stand against your competitors, we can absolutely do that with a with a, a relative degree of accuracy. Um, just to give you an idea of where you stand. Uh, we can then align all of the issues affecting your site into uh, an impact effort analysis. So we can tell you exactly um, where the quick wins are for sustainability. In the case of this site, it's kind of image optimizations and deferring code, um, stuff like that, and then a little bit of um, sort of extra dev stuff down the bottom here. Uh, these analysis, uh, this analysis is bespoke to every single website. So yours might not look like this if we run the process for you. Um, but it very quickly gives us an idea of how we can um, how we can very quickly get um, moving on your sustainability and sort of start making the improvements that we want to see. Uh, finally, uh, through this audit, we um, give you a projected kind of level of uh, total annual emissions. So that is based on the recommended emissions level is uh, 0 0.3 grams per page. So we assume if we can achieve that, uh, this is the number of emissions your site would um, would generate based on the same kind of the same number of visits. Uh, we can give you a reduction in, in emissions. So in this case, nearly 40 percent. And then like a house EPC, we can give you your current rating and then a possible rating to give you an idea of how much impact um, those efforts will have. So we have run this sort of process before. Um, Dzine is uh, the world's most influential architecture, interiors and design magazine. Uh, they've committed to becoming a net zero business by 2025. Uh, so we ran this process for them, a very media rich website, lots of uh, high quality photos. Uh, so slowing down load times and obviously increasing page size. So as part of those efforts, we saw a 73.6% reduction in the website carbon footprint and a 58.36% decrease in average load time. And then obviously the benchmarking we've done has given them a number to offset for the energy use that can't be eliminated because there will always be some um, so they can be confident that by the time they get to 2025 they will be a net zero business so we're going to very quickly summarize everything and, and and sort of give you an idea of how digital sustainability compares to traditional sustainability um, efforts so we know there's things like cycle to work schemes, we'll, we'll be aware of LED bulbs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so to put it in perspective, a cycle to work scheme is expected to save a business uh, 806 kilograms per employee per year. And that's based on a four mile commute. Uh, and that would be based on the employee coming in every single working day of the year. Um, obviously it, that's kind of less impactful now because we've got work from home and hybrid working policies. So, but that's kind of, this is kind of the maximum value. Uh, it's estimated that you can save five kilograms of carbon emissions per LED bulb installed in your office. So there's probably quite a few of those depending on the size of your premises. And then there's 9.2 grams of saving per page not printed. Um, if we compare that to the site we tested, which saved just over 24 tons uh, from a website, uh, we can give you an idea of how much more impactful digital sustainability can be. So. That saving is the equivalent of 30 employees from that business uh, uh, cycling to work every single day, every year. Uh, it's the equivalent of just under 5,000 LED bulbs, um, sort of changing, changing from halogen or traditional bulbs to LED bulbs. And you'd have to not print uh, 2.7 million pages to, to achieve the same um, kind of data. So it's huge, it's, it's definitely significant. Um, which is why we think it's really important to be talking to you all about it today. So in summary, uh, today we've we've learned that carbon emissions from the internet are invisible, but they're very present contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. And we've sort of got an idea of how we all play a part in reducing emissions created by our own websites. Uh, we've also discovered that digital sustainability isn't a complicated process to analyze and start implementing, especially when you factor in our new solution for bulk testing websites. Um, with the application of standard SEO improvements, you can start your organization's journey towards digital sustainability, helping to show your customers that you care about your impact on the planet. And we've learned that tackling sustainability 
is a great way of improving user experience and therefore getting your website to work a little bit harder for you. So we've proven that what's good for the environment is also good for your business. And that's everything from me formally for now, um, but I'll have a go at answering your questions in just a second. And let's have a look at some of the questions that have come through. Uh, so we've been asked the question of how long it takes to run an audit, um, and that will roughly depend on the size of the site. So the bigger your site is, the longer it takes us to gather the data. Um, but it, it, it's not it's not ridiculous. I mean, the site we tested, which was quite a big one, it probably took about a week for us to gather that data. Um, so you can sort of there's like a sliding rule where we can we can kind of give an idea of, of how long it will take um, if anyone is interested in that process. Uh, there's a question here about whether your choice of CMS affects sustainability. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So there are some CMSs that are a little bit uh, less code heavy than others. Um, so things like uh, WordPress tends to be very good because there's lots and lots of plugins that you can uh, use to control the size of the page, everything like that. Um, there are other solutions. We tend to see like out of the box website builders, um, things like kind of Wix, Shopify tend to be a little bit more code heavy. So they will have a little bit more of an effect on the, uh, the emissions of your site. Uh, there's a question here about Core Web Vitals, is it enough, a good starting place, or should we be doing more? I mean, Core Web Vitals is a great starting place um, because it kind of gives us something definite to aim for. We can look at every single page and we can see what the largest element is. Um, so we can kind of start there and aim for an improvement. Um, but there is so much more that can be done. Um, bearing in mind that part of the equation is how far you um, sort of send any of the data. We can um, look at things like CDNs, so delivering uh, data like sort of more locally to where sort of your customers are, their geographic location. So we send that data uh, less distance, which cuts it down. Um, there's other things we can do, uh, like your, as I say, the, 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 um, the hosting, your hosting supplier can be part of it. Um, and there's other things like you know how how clean your code is um so yeah but core web vitals is a great starting place um but it's definitely not the be all and end all um it's something we can improve on a lot uh so that sort of nicely brings us into a question about hosting uh so we've got does your hosting does hosting your website via the cloud or on a server make a difference is there one that's considered better than the other uh it's a really good question uh I, that would depend pretty much on kind of where your where your user is located because you know the, the the cloud is is a location it's a server somewhere um so there's always going to be a, a kind of a distance that data has to travel um but that's that's absolutely something we can work out so if you have a website that's dealing uh, sort of a global website with multiple locations and you want to make it as as strong as possible Across those locations, we could obviously look at um, CDNs would be a good answer for that uh, content delivery networks for anyone who's not kind of familiar with that um, would be it would be a good option for that. So. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I am happy to kind of look into it further and give a give a more full answer on that, because uh, that's that's quite, that's quite a complicated one, um, but I will follow up on that one afterwards um so there's i think we've got time for one more question any any questions that i haven't answered um i'll follow up on individually so you will get an answer um there's a question here about uh, third party code and and the impact that has again this is a really really good question um because obviously there is with things like um tag manager and embedded files and uh, and plugins as, as, uh, as in the case of wordpress etc uh, there are bits of code on your website that you that you maybe can't fully control um and i guess the, the goal the goal there is to just kind of try and limit limit their impact on your site so there are tiny tiny little things you can do so in, in the case of plugins 
one of the recommendations is if a plugin is loading sort of too much code and it, your website doesn't need all of that code to function, you can either contact the plugin um, kind of supplier. That one is not overly successful, I will admit. But the other thing you can do is you can look at alternative plugins so you can kind of see what, what runs fastest and get your site running as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, that's kind of everything we've got time for at the moment. As I say, I will follow up with all of the questions that I haven't managed to answer in this time. Um, and just say thank you everyone for coming and uh, I hope it was useful. And if you've got any questions, reach out to us and um, we'll be, be happy to help. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, see you next time.